Okay, what we're going to do is we're actually going to deal with the um, data that we got from the coin lab. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use this as a, um, a spreadsheet, and we're going to actually do all our calculations right here. Uh, it's going to make the whole thing volume density, all that stuff, just a lot easier to do. So, there's going to be a number of videos because I want them to be reasonably small and I want them to be easy to upload. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean this up a little bit to make it a little easier to work with. Um, we're going to right click and we're going to go, we're going to click at the top of the timestamp lab because we don't need that column, and I'm going to right click and go delete. Boom. And that goes away. And I'm going to leave the student names because I think that's something we could use. I'm also going to leave this whole um, weight and gram scene. I'm actually going to make it a little smaller and pull this down a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay. And then diameter. I'm just going to pull all these guys over a little bit so you can see them a little tiny bit better. There we go. All right. So we got all that. Now, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we want to sort this. Now, um, this is somewhere, it's under a filter, it's under data, I think, under different versions of Excel. Um, but if you click over here and says sort and filter, I'm going to click, I'm going to click in the coin type, um, column, and I'm just going to sort A to Z. Boom. And that sorts everything one after the other. Alright, so Peterson, Tom Kong, and all these others, you notice everything pops up. And you notice the data actually looks pretty good. 4.6, 4.6, 4.6, 5, 4. Okay, the Buffalo Nickel seems to come Pretty much to be around 4.6 seems to be its weight. Okay, the Jefferson nickel, 4.8, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. Um, Dime, 2.4, 2.4. So you notice these numbers are all real good. Every once in a while you hit one that looks a little odd. You take a look at this one right here. Um, the Liberty Silver Dollar, 26, 2.6, 2.6, 2.5, 27, 23. Kind of obvious what happened there. I think you can misplace decimal when they were typing. Those things happen. All right, we're just going to go look through here. This one here, um, the Liberty Silver Dollar. Again, we have another misplaced decimal. All right, which is one of the reasons why we're probably not going to average the, um, or if we average these, we probably want to kind of get rid of the data that doesn't actually uh, look right. Um, this one here looks a little odd too. The modern penny um, at five grams. Everybody else has half of that. All right, so these are all our numbers. The numbers actually look pretty good. Okay, now the first thing I want to do. Is and as a matter of fact, now you are not going to do this. I'm going to do this because I want to make um, give give myself a little bit more room to work. I'm going to delete the lab partners. You keep that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit clearer. All right. So we have the buffalo head nickel. We have thickness. The first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the volume of this. Now, volume is the area of the top of the coin times its thickness. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert another column. We're going to type in the word volume. All right. And this is going to be volume in millimeters cubed. Now it's going to change a little bit. Now, how do we figure this out? Well, pretty simple. Volume is pi r squared. Now we have the diameter, so we can figure out the radius. It's half the diameter, and we're going to square that. So there are ways of doing this, but I'm going to actually do this by typing in a formula. So I'm going to type in equals pi, which is 3.14, okay, times. Now, I'm actually going to open up a set of parentheses, and I'm going to say, okay, well, the diameter isn't what I want. I want the radius, and that's half the diameter, so I'm just going to do that right here in Excel. I'm going to take the diameter and divide it by 2. That gives me the radius. Now, I'm sure there's a way of doing exponents, but I'm lazy and I don't feel like looking it up right now for the plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply the radius again. And I'm just going to hit multiply. And then I'm just going to do the exact same thing I just did. I'm going to open parenthesis. Oops. There we go. This divided by 2. Close parenthesis. And basically, so you know, have pi times r times r, which is in fact pi r squared. All right, and it comes up to this pretty big number, 3.49. Now, I could do that formula all over again, and if you notice, it's right up here, right here is the formula. Okay, I could do this thing all over again, but now, actually, I actually only actually figured the diameter. I really didn't figure the volume. So what I really want to do is diameter. Um, the area times the volume is what I want, times the height. So I'm actually going to enclose this entire thing in parentheses, 
shift, put a parenthesis in front, and now I gotta put a double parenthesis behind it. Alright, and again, when I hit that, everything's still fine. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to multiply this entire thing, okay? This is the diameter, the area. I'm gonna multiply that by the thickness. So I'm gonna multiply it times this. Enter. Okay, and that is the volume. Okay, 594 times that. Now, here's the beauty. All I have to do is if I want to get the volume all the way down, this is in cubic centimeters, millimeters, is I just going to drag this thing all the way down. And it's going to repeat that formula over and over and over and over again. Boom. Okay, like is good. All right, so that's how you calculate volume. Now we're going to take that and we're going to calculate mass in the next video.